Hello everybody, my name is Spoons Rattling, and welcome to my video where today I'm going to be showing you my process for making a new color scheme, specifically in relation to Tyranids, how I made my own custom hive fleet, and how I'd recommend you go about doing it. So, I pulled up a list here on Wikipedia of Greek mythological creatures, as the first thing I like to do is usually start with the name. Uh, it can be hard to come up with names, but I'd say Tyranids are some of the easiest, as all of their names are just ancient mythological creatures. Uh, you can actually see some here, uh, the Basilisk, which uh, does have a high flea named after it. But there's so many of these things, really the options are endless. There's definitely some very cool ones. I think Asterius, that could be pretty cool. Um, there's also things like uh, Serastes, which I think... Oh, I think there's a knight named after this, so maybe don't go for that, but Cerberus. There might already be a High Fleet Cerberus, but I can't remember if I'm misremembering. Uh, High Fleet Charon, that could be cool. He's the uh, the Ferryman of Hades, obviously. Uh, Carbides, that's an awesome name for the High Fleet. Uh, it's a sea monster, too, so. Um, High Fleet Chimera, all these things work pretty well. Uh, then... You know, pretty much the names are endless. Me, personally, I was looking through this. I was looking through. I came down to animals from Greek mythology and came to one uh, where it says... Carcanos, which is the uh, giant crab that fought Heracles alongside the Lernaean Hydra. A, Carcanos is a very cool name, so that's why I named it that. But it's also cool that it fought alongside the Lernaean Hydra, as you probably know, I'm an Alpha Legion player, so Lernaean Hydras, Carcanos, they're related. Alpha Legion and Tyranid are related. That's just a cool little Easter egg. But there's a lot of cool names down here. Uh, anything you'd really want to name, anything you'd want to name it, you probably can. And obviously, there, you don't just have to go with uh, Greek, you can also go with Norse creatures. Um, now, obviously, the main one that comes to mind is uh, Jormagander, which is already a... Uh, Oh, what's the word? Uh, High Fleet, sorry, mind blanked. But I think a very good name for him would be Nidog, or Nidog, I believe it is. Uh, I think he was in God of War, I haven't played it, but he's basically a dragon that eats through the roots of the Tree of Life, and when he makes his way through, like he fully eats through it, it hails Ragnarok, the end times, which I think is a perfect fit for the Tyranids. So that could be a pretty, very fitting name even, I think. It was probably my second choice once I learned about it, but I was already set on Karkonos. Mainly because Karkonos is a really cool name. <laughs> That's 100% my entire reason for doing it. And now that we've got our name settled, which can also influence it, like if you wanted to go with this representation of Nidog, you go for the black and red, but it's time to move on to the color scheme. And when it comes to Tyranids in specifics, there's two general uh, schools of thought, I'd say, uh, that come to mind. Uh, was it Jormungandr? I believe it was Jormungandr. So Jormungandr has high contrast of yellow and red, uh, or yellow and black, sorry. Kronos has red and black. That falls into the same category. You also uh, have uh, High Fleet Behemoth, which also falls into high contrast with the, uh, with the red and blue. But you don't have to go high contrast. You can go High Fleet Kraken style, which... At first, you may think it's part of the same uh, general feel, but if you look at it, the uh, the red has a through line with the white, as it has that sort of reddish-brown tint to it. Uh, so this is generally the two schools of thought I follow. Go for something that complements one another or high contrast. Now, what I'm going for, as we're going to see here in a few minutes, is I'm going for the high contrast uh, way of doing things. Uh, in particular, I'm going for a very icy color scheme, which we're about to see using a, a few paints. And now obviously, whatever paints you want, to, you want to use, it's really up to you. But when I'm looking for a paint color, I'll generally go to Games Workshop. I think their website just has the best interface for it. Go here, and then uh, painting and modeling. Then just browse paint by color. Uh, pick your two colors and go from there. I'd avoid metallics because obviously. <laughs> so avoid your brasses, your uh, coppers, your golds. Uh, I generally, think Tyranids look good in any color, but not metallics. That's just sort of how that works. Um, and then, just go to Tyranids and pick a model you want to paint, uh, test it on. Obviously, if you're buying uh, 
If you're buying Leviathan, it doesn't matter too much, but it wouldn't hurt to have your color scheme down. I personally went for the, uh, where are they? Where are they? I went for the Hive Tyrant. Uh, I, this is a great model, as we're going to see here. I assembled it, and it uh, came out great. So, that about does it for this section. Let's get into the painting. So to start off with, I based him white, and I actually applied some uh, white scar through an airbrush to bring up the brightness. The first step, though, was to apply contrast paint, and contrast works great for the Tyranids, as their skin just takes it very well. I'm using the contrast paint Pilar Glacier, which is a good bit lighter pigmented and is generally used for things like ice or plasma guns. But I am going for quite an icy theme, uh, so I figured this would be perfect for the skin. Here you can see... I just slowly applied this over the whole model, and honestly, it went on like a dream. There were a couple spots where it pooled up a little bit, mainly in that ribcage area, but really, no problems. It's, like most contrast paints, very user-friendly and easy to use. It also just gives it a very nice finish, as we'll see when the model's done. The next step is to start painting that chitin, and the chitin I'm painting is using dark Prussian blue from uh, Vallejo. As we're about to see here, it is a very rich, deep blue. It uh, exudes almost like a royal aura to it, uh, or like a military dress. So it really introduces an interesting sort of different blue to it, and that's the main color here is blue. I'm going for sort of a, a blue version of High Fleet Kraken, if you will. Um, you can really just see, as I'm applying here, it's... I'll be honest, this doesn't apply great over white. If I was doing this again, I would probably put down a coat of black and then do white. Or not white, then do the uh, Prussian blue. As it took several, several coats to get solid coverage. But the result was definitely worth it. Just if you are going to try and follow this, make sure you uh, apply Prussian blue over a slightly darker, uh, slightly darker base coat than just pure white. You can still see here it's still very patchy. This is what I should have done. I'm now applying uh, Black Legion, which is one of my favorite black paints, to uh, all the weapons and uh, horns uh, and barbs, I guess, because the thing on its head, that's still blue, but uh, like its teeth, its chest barbs, its ankle barbs are all going to be black. Now, this may seem a little bit strange, but my main thought process is uh, when flesh gets frostbitten, it will oftentimes turn black. And these are living weapons, they are alive, so I figured it would make sense to make them this sort of uh, deep black color, highlighted with a bit of gray as we'll get to later, uh, and also by dropping my camera on my lap. Here you can see what that looks like. I also applied Prussian blue to the uh, chitin upon his weapon, and then I used one of my favorite colors, yet again, Screamer Pink for the tongue. I would later apply some gloss varnish to this, but that's just like a, a nice bonus step, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now, one thing I didn't include in this video, some of the weapons have eyes on them, and I would make them yellow, as that just contrasts black well and looks nice. <sighs> Sorry. From there, uh, you're on to, I believe the next step is going to be a gray, actually. And what we're going to use this gray for is quite simple. We're going to cover the... Uh, what is it? Oh, sorry. We're actually using Bugman's Glow to paint the uh, venom sacs, toxin sacs, adrenal glands, things like that. They're the sort of brainy looking stuff. So I painted a Bugman's Glow and apply a orange uh, contrast paint over it just to bring some extra life to it. It's a very simple way of doing it, but it also just adds more contrast, increases readability. Uh, it's just a simple way of doing it. And now, back to where we were, where you're going to use Administratum Grey, one of my favorite paints, to paint in all the sort of sub-flesh area, muscle, I guess you could call it. This is going to be the uh, sort of loading port on the gun, where you can see where it connects into his gun, as well as the spots on his hands where it locks into the ammo tube, and also the vents along its body. Uh, these vents are actually used, I just learned this, to vent the excess heat coming from the extreme metabolic rate they run at, because these things redline until they die. And then what we're using is Gravelord Grey from the Army Painter to paint in on the grey, which just dulls it down and uh, brings it more in line, as well as just, again, increasing contrast. Uh, this helps a lot on the weapon, mainly, uh, 
to help break up the black, but it also helps a lot on the arms to introduce more contrast and increase readability, which is one of my main tenets, is making sure everything is readable from my model from tabletop level, while still looking good. Then, once you let that to dry, you're for the most part done. It's really just sort of minor things. This is about where I'd leave a, say, like, smaller Tyranid Beastie, uh, maybe a little less detailed, but really this is what I would do for, say, anything Tyranid Warrior and bigger. Anything smaller than that, you could leave out the Gravelord Grey and uh, highlighting stuff. It's not too important. Now, the next step is... Uh, Quite an important one, I think. It's using a darkened Administratum Gray, so mix them a little bit of black, uh, to highlight the black weapons. This is honestly really easy. The dark gray not only easily increases readability, it's very f forgiving. Like, it's not going to show up super bright if a little bit spills over the edge. I apply this to the edges of the sword, the barrel of the gun, the middle raised part of his sword, and uh, any of the horns and his uh, hooves. Forgot to mention those earlier. It's a simple enough process. Just use the side of your brush and you should be fine. It looks really nice though. It's a subtle but very punchy effect is what I'll say. You can see me uh, sort of... What's that part of the sword called? Uh, well, I don't know. But we're uh, applying some gray over it. If you know what that is, let me know down in the comments and I'll refer to it that in future videos. Uh, and I also get the brunt of the blade with this as well. But that's uh, uh, nearing the end. You can see me here highlighting the uh, muzzle of, I believe that's a heavy venom cannon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's a pretty nasty gun, and I made that sort of the focus of how he's posed. But from there, you have to do a slightly tedious and hard to explain step of uh, sort of battle damaging the chitin. You're going to want to edge highlight it and apply these streaky highlights going up. It's very much how Games Workshop paints their Tyranids, and most people paint them. It's something you just kind of have to do. There's no one right way of doing it. For the main stuff, I mainly used a brush, and then for the smaller bits, I used dry brushing, which we'll see when we get to the 360 view. It's quite a simple way to do it, but uh, it's very important, I think. It increases, again, readability, and also just makes the model look nice. Uh, those steam vents look nice with the bright tops and everything. Uh, and again, increasing contrast yet again, you can see here, it's a simple but effective measure. I also did that on the horns. Anything that was the Prussian blue got that highlighting treatment. You can see here on the uh, legs, I did mixed brush work and dry brush work, but mainly on the tail is where I did dry brush work, so you can see the different ways of doing it. Anyways, my name has been Spoons Rattling. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.